Dusk has turned to night, and these often misunderstood animals have taken to the sky. With the arrival of the colder months, they started migrating or preparing to hunker down for the long winter. But in busy urban environments, this isn't always easy. So a lot of the bats that we do get in are coming in because of a human wildlife um, conflict. It really, it, it's probably 95 to 100% of the bats that we get in are for this reason. This young big brown bat, barely seven weeks old, nearly drowned in a swimming pool. The kind homeowner scooped her out just in time. After taking a closer look at her body condition, the veterinary team noticed an issue with her tail yeah. that needed surgery. So she jiggled with a little broken tail tip, a little at the end, and over time it starts to necrose, which means its tissues start to die. So what we want to do is to just take off the little tip, take off the end, do a little mini amputation, and then seal it, and she should be good as new. Though this young bat was likely still learning to fly, even adults encounter many challenges. For those that hibernate, finding a safe place can be more complicated than one would think. In our urban environments, I feel bats face a lot of challenges finding the appropriate places to roost for the winter. It's hard to find a quiet, dark, but human space that's not bothering people. A lot, of, a lot of the times the calls that we get in about bats around this time is because they've chosen a bat spot and they are on somebody's screen door or in somebody's attic. There's lots of other places that they can be, but there's not a lot of that natural environment that's just a dark, damp cave anymore. That metabolic rate, because it's so low, their activity level is so low, so they're really not able to fly very far or get their body warm enough to be active and move to a better spot if the spot that they chose around this time has been disturbed. In this case, a silver-haired bat was found inside an office in busy downtown Toronto. We received a call from somebody who works at an office downtown and there was a whole kerfuffle because there was a bat in the office. Um, somebody moved the bat outside and left them on the ground in a planter. So the bat wasn't able to fly away. Um, there was definitely something wrong with them. So the lander safely contained the bat. The individual was very determined to help this silver-haired bat. So determined that with no car of their own, they sent the animal in an Uber directly to TWC's door after informing the driver, of course. How are you doing? Good. I think it's fine. Yeah, thank you so much for driving to us. No thank you so much. No you are amazing. You're a hero. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. Oh, there he is. Another silver. Another silver. All right, 7.1 is his weight. Uh, we had a quick look at this bat. He seems quite stressed, so we decided to keep the exam quite brief. Dr. Wiki and I both had to look at his behavior. Really wasn't too major, so we're going to give him a little bit of time on some heat, some oxygen therapy. We've given him some sucky fluids, see if he'll improve on those treatments. Because a lot of the time, patients do present a lot better after even some supportive care. I I really love the way that we care for bats. Um, each of them has their own individual little house um, because they are a rabies vector species. We do need to keep them separate. We keep them in small mesh houses. Um, so that in theory, they can still communicate with each other. Um, we do an indoor greenhouse, like a humidor, just to try and trap in humidity with a humidifier so that we can keep their levels of humidity at an appropriate level. We do all of this once we've stabilized them. And in order to stabilize them, we need to make sure that their body condition is in a good enough place. We hydrate them, we'll feed them, We'll make sure they're nice and stable and a little bit plump before we slow down their metabolic rate again and get them back into that natural body state so they've got a little bit extra stuff to lose. The long-term care of a bat will depend on their species. Some bats will slow their metabolisms to enter a state of torpor for the winter. Others migrate. And just as hibernates face obstacles finding safe places to roost, migrators face dangers like disorienting city lights and glass windows they can't see like this red bat. So our bat is very, very springy. <laughs> He's 
this is very like active. Um, the intake circumstances seem to suggest that he hit a window overnight when he was trying to migrate through downtown Toronto, which is pretty common for these guys because around this time of year they um, have to migrate through. Yeah, he has a wing injury. He's got a tiny little hole. I think that's a hole anyway. Yeah, that's a hole. Um, kind of on the right. Is that a spot of bruising though? Let me just see what it looks like on the other end. I think it is because I don't see it on the other side. With some fluids and medication, this red bat began his recovery journey. Red bat, big brown, silver haired. How many bat species are in Ontario anyway? The answer is eight, and half are endangered. Some of the bat species that we do get at the center are species at risk, which means that we have to pay really close attention to their population. Some of these species are like the little brown bat or the small-footed bat. This little brown bat was caught in a mist net, a tool often used to catch birds. She was doing much better following treatment. A critical step in any bat's care before release is the flight test, and it was time for the young Big Brown to exercise her flying muscles following surgery. So test flying, we have a bat hallway that is a beautiful, just straightaway hallway. So we wait until nighttime, we lift them up, we use our handy dandy bat-proof gloves or a net, and we just let them go. And then in order to clear them for release, they have to be flying for 10 minutes. Um, Stay on bliss with good maneuvering and without tiring, because that's about how long they'll fly for once they are released while they're catching bugs before taking a break. She passed with flying colors. Thank you. Despite being very cute and just trying to survive among our booming cities, bats tend to get a bad rep. A lot of people think that our bat can be really dangerous, especially during the spooky season, but they really don't eat blood, they only eat bugs, um, which can be really good for the environment and supply good ecosystem management. They do tend to keep to themselves, and the only reason that they're in an area that might have a human interaction is because they've been displaced and they're in an awkward spot. Bats are individuals. Each bat has their own personality and each bat has their own pizzazz. And I love them. But they're also extremely important to the ecosystem and to the environment. And I always feel like I'm doing my best conservation work when I'm working with species like that. Some bats admitted aren't strong enough for release before the cold weather hits. So they spend the winter at the center receiving in-depth care until spring. But. Those that improve in good time will have a chance to return to the wild while the air still isn't too chilly, like the uber-delivered and now recovered silver-haired bat. Rescue team Darlene set out at dusk, the ideal time for him to return home. You can tell right away how happy they are to be out there because they're usually circling above you and catching bugs and it's just it's really rewarding to see all the bats get back to their spot and do the things they're supposed to do. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit the bell to be notified when we share new content. We would also love if you shared this video with a friend.